Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Oh, you guys are happy today. Must have a good weekend. <laughs> Everyone have a great long weekend. It yes. was a good weekend. It was. The weather was fantastic. Cool. So we're going to get started. We're going to start with TCPA. Make sure you guys are following the last so that you don't receive any fines because nobody wants that, right? Cool. And we have a very, very special announcement for Crystal from the Perfect. Um, and we love you so much. Come so Crystal has a super, super special announcement, and we are so excited to announce that Crystal has been oh, wow. given the job as regional artist accepted. Oh, wow. Thank you for leaving here. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. That kind of means that. Okay, okay. so what, what does that mean for everyone? What does it mean? It means I get to focus a lot more on technology and training. Um, and at the regional level, that means you all still get access to it, as does a mountain of other people. Uh, and it means that I will not be your day-to-day -day question answerer. And that doesn't mean that I'm not available. Uh, you are left in very, very capable hands. Everybody on the ELT fully capable of answering any and all of your tech questions. And when they can't, guess whose job it is? The regional tech <laughs> trainer. So uh, I'm not really going anywhere, but I'm also not going to be. It's oh. <laughs> so I just want to say thank you so much for everything you've done and all the love and energy you put into everything that you do in your job. And while you're still going to be here with us, we're still going to miss you every single day. So thank you. We need a we need, we need a, a daily replacement. Yeah, <laughs> it's a work in progress. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're currently interviewing and working on finding oh, that, that person. We don't need her to go away. And then that person her. will be trained under Crystal. Okay. Um, yeah, I get to train them. The yeah. roles of the regional trainers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Does that mean I get to just read email you and you can answer my mm -hmm. questions now? That means there will be a lovely auto reply that reminds <laughs> you that that's not the best way to do that. Uh, <laughs> so no more better. <laughs> so that's we'll, a we'll have an updated announcement on what the transition looks like, who to contact, when to contact, all of that for you guys by the next business meeting. So but don't let start so I can get all my questions in yeah. <laughs> my, my official last day is next Friday. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh. So you have two weeks to ask me all your things. So if you've ever thought about ordering, concierge is not going anywhere. I'm training plenty of people here to take over. But <laughs> If you have ever thought about having me do something for you instead of you doing it yourself, in the next two weeks is a great time to order those things. Uh, <laughs> ask me all your questions in the next 14 days. Tina's going to send you this email with like 100 topics on it. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> yeah. So should we have to meet in YouTube and have my website, my Facebook, and my Yeah. Shoot me an email. <laughs> I really can. And when I'm gone, somebody else can. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Nothing I do is stopping. It's just shifting. Yeah. So you guys will be left in good hands. Crystal will make sure. And she'll continue to support us regionally. So she'll still be here as part of our team. Yeah. Not moving anywhere. <laughs> Congratulations. Yes. Okay. I'm going to stand down. Right. Sean, it's you. Do you want me to click for you? I just clicked that. Yeah, I can click for you. Okay, I would like that. <laughs> All right, well, um, so I did a special class a couple of weeks ago uh, that two people came to. So I thought, and it was such an important subject, I thought, I'll do it again. So, so I'm doing it again. Good. Um, and uh, the subject is on canceling listings. Okay, so there's, I had a whole bunch, I had four in one week. Uh, Price these agents who were not knowing quite what to do and things like that. So I thought, oh, this is really a good opportunity to, to address some of those issues, uh, what the difference is in the forms, legally what that means, all that kind of stuff. So 
So just for fun to start, legally, in the state of Washington, can a seller cancel their contract at any time? A listing yes. Yeah. Oh, a listing. A listing. Okay. Well, so so it's interesting that the class is, but I was asking that question around to a lot of people, and and the answer by most people was yes, but the true answer is no. Okay, the contract. The contract is. The listing contract is a bilateral contract, which means it can only be terminated bilaterally. I mean, both parties have to agree to do so. One party cannot just do it. Okay, so if one party does it, that's a breach of contract. And there are damages. And what's the damages? The commission. So a seller would have to be very careful about doing that. Now, I wanted to mention two things. One of them is that on the listing end, when you're the listing agent, your seller says to you, I, I, I want to get out of my contract, my listing contract with you. You need to talk to them a little bit and find out what that's about because you need to let them know, hey, this is a contract. I mean, I, I move forward in good faith that I was going to have whatever, six months, let's say, six months to you know, to market and sell your home. And I, and I got my plan in place and I've spent money, I've spent effort, I've, you know, that kind of thing. So I, won't, I, uh, I need to be reimbursed for those <laughs> things at least. But, um, but it's not just something that can be done, you know, like that. Um, so we have with Lynn, that's, that's on legal terms, right? But we have, uh, we have our own, um, culture within Keller Williams, which is, you know, when an agent is here with Keller Williams, has listings, and then leaves this office, goes to a different office, to Keller Williams or wherever, you know, we don't object to your taking your listings with you. That's just our culture. We don't make a big issue of it. And it would seem that when a seller doesn't want to be in have you in their service anymore that we don't want to fight that either. But at the same time, what we don't want to do is have, a, have sellers who just use you, manipulate you, get a buyer online, then try to get out of a commission by canceling their listing. And so, you know, this is a judgment call you're going to each have to make in those situations. I know it sometimes is frustrating and maddening, but if they have a valid reason, you know, I, I just, I can't, I can't afford to keep this house vacant anymore. I've got to rent it out or, you know, I mean, there's, there's valid reasons. And then there's the sneaky stuff, you know, that we just don't, don't necessarily want to buy into with them. But, but we got to, you know, just be aware of the culture versus the Keller Williams culture versus the law on that. And so, uh, the forms that you'd use. Oh, and so the second part of that is that sometimes we have sellers that come to us and say, I've got an agent who has my house listed for sale and they're just not doing anything. I'm just so upset with them and I want you to take over. Okay, we want to be a little cautious, a little careful about doing it. You know, be, be your normal, happy, bubbly self talking to them, but make sure they understand that um, uh, here's, here's some words that I, I, that I devise that I think are a good, good words to you. To just say, until the listing expires or you have a Form 52 signed by the listing broker and designated broker, I won't be able to begin. Okay, so you don't want to be directing them on how to terminate their listing, things like that. All you say is that statement. It's a fact, is it not? So it's not leading or anything else. It's just a, a factual statement. And so I like it. Until the listing expires or you have a Form 52 signed by the listing broker and designated broker, I won't be able to begin. 
So if they use a form 19 and pull it out of the multiple, get it out of the MLS, okay, that doesn't that doesn't affect the contract. Doesn't affect the contract. All that does is the change order thing for the MLS. All it does is either make it active, inactive, what, you know, but that doesn't affect the contract. The contract that was signed, the listing contract form 1A, 1A that was signed by you or by the other agent or whatever it was is in effect. So, so if that, that's owner who had a form 1A signed with their agent at that other office, now that owner comes to you and wants you to list it and they say, oh, it's already, it's already off the market. Yep, I signed, I signed, I signed this form 19 change order and it's off the market. Okay. Well, that's that's nice. But they still have a listing contract form 1A that's a place for who knows how long. So you need to ask them about that. Um, because if you list it and then stuff happens, all of a sudden this other office technically not saying, i'm saying technically because i've not seen it happen i've only seen it happen one time about 10 years ago someone tried to make an issue of that so i don't see it happen a lot but um but that's because we haven't had a lot of you know we have, have had a lot of years or we've had some good years and we have a lot of expireds and all that kind of stuff and so we're getting back we're, we're going to start getting back into some of those things maybe in a, in a normal market but we need to be aware of the correct form of use. So I personally, and, and you can think that I'm being sneaky by doing this. I personally, though, if my seller came to me and said, I want to take it off the market, um, you know, I, I just want to get off the market. Well, it's a great. There's form 19 sign here. <laughs> and I would take it out of the MLS yeah. and not even talk about the form, the form 1A they signed. In the form 52, they would have to sign to terminate the list. I wouldn't even talk about it unless they said, you know, well, here's the circumstances. Here's what I have to do. I have to get it. I have to get our contract terminated. Then I would say, okay, well, if we're going to do that. I would need the form 52 to do that. Because form 19 just takes it out of the MLS. Um, so, you know, if they're being honest with me and just saying, yeah, yeah, I just need, I just want to take, take it off the market for, you know, a bit or whatever. If they're being honest with me, then okay, form, form 19 works. No other discussion needed. You know, but really if they're being honest and they tell you what's really going on and they need a form 52 sign, then I might go into that. That's yeah. a little pushback. <laughs> yeah. So when they release it from the MLS, the next day they get tons of calls from people that are trying to get expired. So number one, I think I would explain that to them if that's what really what they want to do. They're gonna get a bunch of calls from other agents trying to convince them to list their property. I think most agents think form 19 does the job. And so they, they don't even know that they should do a form 52. Right. It's my guess. And so 99.9% .9 of the time they're gonna do a form 19 and think they're done. Right. Correct. But they'll be the one sneaky one like you that will go on <laughs> and then try to make an issue later. Right. Well, John, you know, Bruce Hardy teaches, as you know, um, the easy exit listing agreement. And that's in my listing pack. I mean, he's got it. If you know, if you if you're unhappy with me at any time or whatever, you know, you can you can get out of your contract. And I'm you know, and I tell them that. And I've never been fired, but what I mean is well, Bruce speaks a different language, foreign language, so I don't understand. But <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's got Australian accent. But but uh, yeah, so 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 there's there's things that can be done that don't have anything to do with the law, they just have to do with what you how you're gonna do your business. Right. And you can come to those agreements with them, but if you give them that promise, you better keep it. You know, so don't don't come to me if you make that agreement with them. Don't come to me later and say, "Oh, they're trying to get out of it." Well, here's what they say: you signed with them, so so yeah. you signed that with them, they can get out. But that's not what the law says. That's a contractual agreement, right? Okay. 
Okay, so so just one last thing. Form 18 is the other thing that um, the other form that can be used to make some changes to a listing, like the price or extending it and things like that. And, and notice the difference at the top of those two things. Form 19 is just an MLS, you know, order. But Form 18 is an amendment to the contract. So it's part of the Form 50, Form, form 1A, sorry, it's part of Form 1A. So if a Form 18 is used, be careful, you know, what you're doing there, because that's going to amend that listing contract 1A that you have with that seller. Um, on those on those issues, um, on those two issues. So, um, so we have within our listing contract one A, we have what's what's what we've always been calling a an extender clause. And the extender clause was right after the commission amount was written in. It was all that information that says that if this is taken off the market, if it's expired, whatever that for six months, and it just said that for six months. If anyone buys the property, you know, whose attention is brought because you have listed, you are out of the commission. But if someone else relists the property, you're out of nothing. So if someone else relists the property after you let it go, and they list for the same commission that you had it listed for, and they sell it, even though you had an extender clause, it doesn't work because they will not, the, the, the state of Washington nor the Department of Licensing for the state of Washington will allow for double jeopardy for itself to have to pay two commissions. So the way our MLS is worked at is to have wording in the, our rules and in the thing. So if they you know, turn around, they terminate your listing and turn around to some, relist it with someone else, it doesn't matter if the, person who buys it with someone who learned about it through your efforts. It's been relisted with somebody else. And we just want to be aware that, that also that that extender clause for the six months after the expiration of it, that it is now being called a tail provision. Um, and so in our changes coming up in less than a month on um, some big forms, you know, to deal with buyer agency, that's the term used is tail provision. Question. In that scenario, if a form 52 was not signed, just a form 19, and they, one, can they legally relist with someone? Two, if they do, and that a buyer came from your efforts, mm -hmm. what does that look like? Messy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, because technically, you know, as a listing, agent who let it go through a form of team, you could go, you could, you know, stir a lot of stuff up for that other, kind of, that other agent and that seller. That's not what we want to do. Sure. You know, we don't want to, we don't, we, we're trying to be a blessing in other people's, in people's lives, right? We're trying to be a blessing and not cause a problem. But at the same time, we're not, we're not, we, we want to be careful and not allow people to just think stuff on us, right? Um, so that's why I say you want to take take care in your conversations with your sellers and make sure you know what's going on, what what, what are they trying to do, because you want to make sure you're doing the right thing by them, and you don't necessarily want another agent to put all their efforts into something and then and then you know have you come back you know yeah. um, threatening a lawsuit and things because you're owed the commission. Well, so you know. I mean, this is, this is, these are murky waters. We got to be really careful when, when you, I just want to I'll finish by just saying, when you have another owner of property come to you wanting you to help them get out of their current listing, you want to be careful because it's a tort called contractual interference. You can be sued for it. If you're steering them, directing them, all that kind of stuff. Uh, there's Northwest MLS rules and regulations. There's a realtor code of ethics that would be violated in doing those things. So you want to be careful and just state the facts to that owner and just say and tell the listing uh, listing expires 
or you have a form that can be signed by the listing broker and there's a new broker I won't be able to do that. Now we can go ahead, we can go ahead, you seller and I can go ahead and make plans for what we're gonna do starting day one when we list your property. We can have the, the three month marketing plan all done up, ready to go. That's fine, we can meet, talk about that. But I can't, I can't do anything because you're contractually obligated to somebody else right now. Doesn't it get even murkier though because on the, on the listing agreement, I believe it says something about having it continuously listed with the MLS in order to get, help them get it sold. Some clause in there, I, I'd have to reread Continuously it. listed with the MLS for? Yeah. yeah, as part of the listing agreement. So if they take it out with a form 19, it's no longer listed with the MLS. Oh, I see what you're saying. So they haven't done, really done their part. So if they went to court, is what I'm saying, just yeah. to go throw it out, I would think. So yeah, it would be murky. It would be it yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just so so my when I said I would use a form 19, you know, if they came to me and said they wanted, to, you know, to take the listing off the market, I said, okay, then the form 19 will do that. We'll take it off the market. Okay, I may not do anything if they go ahead and list with somebody else. Recently. I, I probably wouldn't do anything. But I just want to know that that's the case. And I want to be able, and if I know I'm being manipulated by that seller, I just want to be able to call them and say, hey, did you know we still have a contract? We have a Form 52 contract, good until December the 30th. I just didn't know that you were aware of it because you told me you just wanted it off the market, which I did, what you asked. But I didn't you know what to let you out of our contract we made that's good through December 30th. Did you know that it cost me $450 of hard costs just to put it on the market for that? Like, 30 days we had on the market. Did you know that? Would you, would you like to reimburse me for that? And have me just let the contract go? Seems like a win win to me. These are hard situations. I just had, I just sold a a house in Puyallup for $1.3 million that the seller, the other agent, is very nice and very honest with Century 21. And they tried to take it off the market um, before we got there. I mean, before we showed it. And Century 21 said, no, you can't. I mean, I just thought that was, I mean, they just wouldn't let them get out of the contract. Well, and that's not our culture. No. Uh, necessarily. You know, our culture isn't to let. I mean, I'm glad because we got to sell the house, but, but, but we're trying. We're trying to be a blessing in people's lives and not, yeah. and not be an annoyance to them. I like that. Sure. Okay. okay. Well, I just wanted to kind of touch on those because those are some really delicate issues, and when we do have to talk about those at some point in the future, I just want to make sure everyone's got kind of a background on it. Sometimes, y'all, when you're trying to pull it off the market, not very often, but sometimes they are trying to pull it off the market they've got a side deal with somebody at their, where they work uh -huh. who says they want to buy their house. Right. Uh, maybe even from the flyer that you, you gave them that they took to right. work. Um, that's when, as an agent, you would want Form 52 signed because it says right in there, and they, then they'll, they'll, they'll realize, hey, pull this thing off the market. I just can't. I got to wait six months before I can sell it to them. Right? Yeah. Yeah, because in that form 52, it does contain that, that tail provision, yep. Santa Claus, right, and the wording of it, um, which is the same as in form 1A, so it's not, not a big difference. Now, the change that's coming on the form 1A is that instead of there being an automatic six-month tail provision, extended clause, now it's going to, there's going to be a six-month by default parentheses, but a blank where you can write, where they see they can have this negotiation for how long the tail provision is going to be. Okay. Hi, Karen. I'm going to be honest. I submitted these slides two weeks ago. I have no idea what's up here. So we're going to adventure together. Uh, things that are live now. Marketplace has gotten a bit of an update. Uh, nothing particularly new in here, but you're going to see a lot of new integrations coming. Uh, 
KW is really focusing on third party systems that are doing a really good job and making those accessible through command. So in preparation for that, uh, what they've done is clean up marketplace a little bit. If you've ever been in there, you know that it's not very intuitive, kind of hard to navigate. Um, they've cleaned up some of the search features. It has its own contact us section now. So you're looking for marketplace specific support. It's got its own section, which is really helpful. And really it's just a lot easier to navigate, a lot easier to see what you're doing in there. Um, this is exciting for anybody using DocuSign. And that is that you can print your forms in bulk now, which I didn't realize you couldn't do before. <laughs> so if you have a bunch of uh, signed documents and or PDFs, this doesn't work for forms because um, we've got legal issues with printing blank forms. But um, anything signed or a PDF, you can print in bulk. So you can print it all at once instead of clicking one at a time. Uh, we are about to see in the next few weeks the removal of the add to sales pipeline button. The reason they're removing it is because it doesn't do anything. Uh, <laughs> never has. It's a non-functioning button. They're getting rid of it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, and coming campaigns, uh, Instagram social posts is coming to campaigns. I'm very excited about this one. This is going to make a big difference for a lot of people. Uh, before you ask me, no, this does not apply to stories. Just posts. We're going to be really thankful for what we have. Um, so really excited. It's going to look just like Facebook campaigns, um, but you'll be able to do Instagram posts. Yes, Mackenzie. Are they ever going to make it so we get the more than 250 characters in our posts? Like we can on actual Facebook and Instagram? I believe you can on posts, just not on ads. And that's intentional. Um, yeah, the, the link for Facebook posts is much longer than the link for ads and the links for ads is intentionally short. Because uh, they're trying to help guide you into keeping it above the see more button. Gotcha. Yep. Uh, I am teaching an Instagram class tomorrow. I was uh, talking with Ashley in the hallway, and we described this as the IKEA furniture of Instagram, uh, meaning I'm going to hand you six steps. And if you do these six steps, it has been proven that these are the results if you are committed to the process. So I'm literally going to hand you do this on this day, this on this day, do this as follow up. This is what you do in this order. Here's the template and the one page. Have a good day. Um, my plan is to do it for you in 30 minutes. So I'm literally going to hand you the system. You can ask me your questions and walk away. Uh, but I'm really excited to be able to teach this. It is all online. You don't need to register ahead of time. Just log into Zoom, use this meeting ID and this passcode, and it will let you in. Uh, but this is one of several that are coming next week i'm doing facebook um and once i fully make the regional transition expect to see a lot more november is this like a postcard the link to the zoom isn't on there but this yeah. this is there okay yes and i will repost it today too. Yeah. any other questions I think that's, oh, there's the Facebook one. I'm teaching the Facebook one next Wednesday. Which is what day is it? Wednesday, it's oh, the 14th. Yeah. 14th. Okay. Yep. From 11 to 11.30 via Zoom. That's it. I'm done. Okay. okay. Auction time. If you haven't seen the emails, auction October 15th. I will continue to reiterate it. It is at Fox Waterway Seaports in Tacoma. Tickets should be on sale hopefully by this Friday. They're with us. They will be there soon. Um, but today we're going to introduce our auction recipients. Uh, we have Michelle, Julia, and Maida with Vine Maple Place. They're going to share a little bit more about the organization. So keep your ears open. And we're set to meet. Thanks, Jackie. We're so excited. Thank you so much. When Jackie and Rachel in November came to visit a week or so ago, they um, kind of outlined what you guys are doing. It's pretty amazing. What an awesome, awesome organization you are. And we're so grateful. So thank you on behalf of the moms and kids that you're going to help um, at Vine Maple Place. And you have a couple of documents sitting in front of you. And I'm, I promise you, I'm not going to go through these. In detail, I just want you to get kind of a flavor of what goes on at Vine Maple Place every day. And we work in South King County, 
we work with single parents and their children who are homeless um, or almost homeless. And so these families are coming from cars and shelters and running from domestic violence and coming from really difficult situations. They come to one of our facilities. We have one in Maple Valley and one in Kent. Our Kent facility is brand new. We're having our one year celebration on the 10th and I'll make sure you get an invite to that because we'd love to see you guys come in and visit us at some point. But the work there really is working with these moms, dads, aunties, grandmas, who's ever raising these children to help break that generational cycle of homelessness. And generational is an important word because for every parent or um, adult that's raising um, kids, there's two kids coming along in that cycle that's happening. And what the moms and parents tell us when they come to buy Naval Place is that when they were growing up, when they were three and five and 12 and 15, what's happening in their kids' lives today was happening to them. So this isn't just you know families that are coming from mainstream and uh, works tough or some, some difficult things have happened. This is really generational. So again, we're very serious about helping these families get out, back on their feet. And you'll hear that we're a handout, not a handout. They work really, really hard with the resources that are provided by individuals and organizations like you guys, because it is the community that is making this happen. It's pretty miraculous. So we're gonna, we're gonna show you a video real quick. It's a three minute video with two moms, because this is really the highlight. So you get to hear the heart of what's going on and then I'll finish up with you guys. I was scared. I was nervous and didn't know what was gonna happen. I was separated from my daughter and it was horrible being with her for nine months and then meeting her and being taken away from her. It was heartbreaking, it was horrible. I didn't have any help. I had nowhere to run to. I legit had to look at my kids like, okay, what's our next move? It was a lot. Until I came up here, it was a struggle. I was working two jobs. It was like almost impossible for me to pay my bills and pay my rent. Getting more worried, we were really gonna be homeless, you know, living in a car. That's when they told me, like, to get your daughter back, you're gonna have to move out. Leaving me homeless, nowhere to go. My emotions were everywhere. I almost had a feeling like I just wanted to give up. I didn't know what I was gonna do. Safety is number one. Nobody wants to not be safe. I was forced to be in a relationship that I no longer wanted to be in. And then three months later, I found out I was pregnant. I just couldn't get away, which led me and Kiani to have to live life in a domestic violence situation. The physical abuse where he choked me out. Um, when I woke up, it was Nayeli and Kiani crying over me. I couldn't do nothing but cry. I talked to my mom and she just told me she don't know. So I've been living trauma pretty much my whole life. I was broken, like I, I didn't know what to do. So I didn't think that there was any way out. It was, it was faith, prayers of course always, and it was just not quitting. And looking at my kids, that gave me strength to keep going. Vine Maple Place answered me back. So it was like comforting to come here knowing that I have these people that don't know me from Adam and Eve listen to me and were willing to help me get whatever I want and I need for my household. My rent is gonna be paid. That made me feel safe with my kids. It was, it was great. I called Vine Maple and they believed in me. They helped me get into a new place. I got into employment class. I also got help in the children's program. Anything my kids needed, they provided, all the way down to diapers, clothes. And when I told my story here, it was like a lot of people I connected with. Hearing everybody's stories made me open up and I got to let people hear my voice. I felt like that healed me, like I'm not alone. I just want to say thank you for everything that you guys done. I wouldn't have been out of my situation, and I don't know where my kids would be. Again, thanks to Vine Maple, because I'm alive, and I'm saving other lives. I worked very close with Vine Maple, and they ended up getting a donation with a car, and they gave it to me. They got me into my apartment, and within like a couple weeks later, my daughter was reunited. I felt like I had done something right. 
now she was home with me and that I could finally be the mom that I was meant to be. It's just been going uphill ever since. taking a minute to watch that because that really is the heart and soul of what happens every time I watch that it gets me I have to <laughs> that's crazy hey did I introduce you Julia and Maida I want to introduce you guys real quick this is Julia uh, Patterson and she heads up our outreach and community relation and then uh, Maida Magana wave your hand come on Maida. <laughs> donor relations so if you have questions or anything please ask them and we'd love to, to have you come to the, the family hope center at some point like I said so just to finish up here, a couple things that I think are real important for you guys to understand, because you're putting time and resources to this, and we know how important that investment is and how precious your time is. Um, the families that come to Vine Maple Place, 91% of them, one year after they leave the program, are still housed. And that, that's miraculous. That's pretty amazing. They work hard and receive services they need. They have taught us what they need. So we are a client-centric um, focused program and we listen to what the moms and the kids are saying all the time. This um, stability, this is our path to stability and you've got a copy of this. And really these three colors here represent the three-step process. So I just want you to know the stewardship of what's going on um, for the adults. There's counseling, housing, and then there's training classes to get a job and employment and work, it's workforce development basically to get a livable wage job. And then we provide budgeting classes. And there's some other things we do like food and transfer, we help with transportation and such. There's some basic items, but this basically is the process they have taught us that they need in order to get themselves back on their feet. And like I said, it's up to them to show up and engage. That's really the secret to the sauce of what they're doing there is showing up and engaging. And there's the 91% that you can see there. And then on the other side, just super important is the kids program. So this represents again, the safety, um, stability and self-sufficiency. And you know, safety is a warm bed where these kids can lay their head every night where they can come home, do their homework, where they could bring friends, getting back in school. So there's a lot of basic things around that. The um, stability looks a little bit different for the kids. It really is, we have a program that focuses on the kids' feelings. And it focuses on helping kids get re-engaged because their, their development has shut down. They are stuck emotionally. And if these kids stay in this situation, eight out, out of 10 of them will grow up and repeat the patterns and the cycle that lead to homelessness. So we're very dedicated. Um, like I said, two thirds of who we serve are children. It's the heart of the mission. When you guys come around by Maple Place, you're coming around children. And that's what the parents care about too. And they tell us about, and then the, the stability, the, the self-sufficiency part of that, mentoring, tutoring, all kinds of programs that the community comes in and volunteers to provide for the family. So we are volunteer centric, super important there. Um, lastly, you have another document that I gave you and this just gives you some numbers. And I know numbers are important um, from the perspective they help you understand the stewardship of what's happening at Vine Maple Place. So our families are in the program about five and a half months from the time they come in to when they actually leave the program. The kids can stay in the program beyond that time as long as they need to. But five and a half months from homelessness, from a car, from a shelter, that's amazing. They do amazing work there. Um, it costs about $6,200 all in everything. So all the facilities, all the people, all the resources, everything. And so on a monthly, that's what about, I don't know, $1,100, somewhere around that a month. That's a, that's a, a significant and important investment, but still it, it's pretty um, efficient uh, investment there. This past year, so these numbers here, we just finished serving um, about, I think it was 4,000 individuals in the past year. So there's a big we have expanded into Kent and that has helped us grow and continue to grow. When you look at the, um, this graph here, this is amazing. This is since 2012, what the community has done. We were serving 68 individuals in 2012. And again, um, we just finished up serving thousands and thousands of moms and, 
dads and kids and such. So um, the stewardship important there for you to hear, but it is the community. And like I said, organizations like you coming alongside. Lastly, the need is great. I want you to know that this says that we've received 2,000 phone calls in our fiscal year of 21. Well, in fiscal 22, we received 50% higher. It was almost 3,000 phone calls for help. That's pretty significant. Um, we're able to bring 90 new families in every month. So again, that's going to be about 180 new kids each month that are getting the services that they need. The need is great, and we need to just come together and make a difference here. And I know that we can do that with you guys. So thank you so much. I'm so grateful for this time. And uh, thank you, Dr. and the team, and Dennis, and Pam. And I just, I did it before. So. <laughs> <laughs> to reiterate that we still need donation baskets. Stuff for donation for the office. Yep. <laughs> uh, we'll have to start to try to Anything specific that you need? Everything. All the things. Who is it most beneficial if you show up with your baskets? Yes. That'll work. Cool. So going with the rest of our series, we're going to talk about balanced life, and this is straight from the one thing. Um, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and so I just want to start from reading the book and then just go through. Some, can you hear me, Dennis? Can you hear you? Yeah. Hear okay. okay. I will talk I'm louder. Old. I know. I'm old. It's hard to hear. I always like try to make eye contact so you can hear me because he's back there. Okay. So it says, nothing ever achieves absolute balance, nothing, no matter how imperceivable it might be, what appears to be a state of balancing is something entirely, entirely different, an act of balancing. Viewed wistfully as a noun, balance is lived practically as a verb. Seen as something we ultimately attain, balance is actually something we constantly do. A balanced life is a myth. A misleading concept most accepted as a worthy and attainable goal without ever stopping to truly consider it. I want you to consider it, I want you to challenge it, and I want you to reject it. A balanced life is a lie. How many of you guys in the last 30 days have thought, man, I need a little bit more balance in my life? Right? And what that's telling us, right, is that we have one area of our life that's getting more attention than the other. Do you guys agree with that? And most of the time when we're talking about it, we're talking about two pieces of it, our work life and our home life. What the one thing tells us is that these two are actually two separate buckets for each of us. It is not an entwined bucket wrapped around each other. It's two separate pieces that we're constantly having to look at. Does that make sense? Our work life and our home life are separate. And when we try to spend our time balancing them as one is when we start to feel a little crazy and unbalanced, which we're always unbalanced. Like it was just said, balance is a lie. Um, so what it tells us at the end of the scroll, let me, I said scroll or scroll is what I was thinking, but I'm definitely not scrolling, I'm flipping through a book. Um, what we actually need to work on is count counterbalancing, right? And we do that a couple of different ways. So when you're, and it's talking about the long and short of it. So when we say we're out of balance, we're usually referring to a sense that some priorities, things that matter to us are being undeserved or unmet. The problem is, is that when you focus on what is truly important, something will always be underserved or unmet. Right? No matter how hard you try, there will always be things left undone at the end of your day, week, or month. Who has a to-do list that they like to check things off of? And be like, I did that today. Me too. And I like all of my boxes to be checked. Right? So the counterbalance is working on, on two separate things. On your work bucket, you're going to be working in extremes. So you're likely to have one or two things that you're highly focused on at any one time. And the one thing says you should be focusing on one of those one things at a time, right? Make everything easier or unnecessary. 
but you're moving at extreme. So what that looks like in your balance, which is a sign for, is you might be here working on something and then you need to go way over here and work on this. And then you're going way over here, right? So it's bigger spaces between, right? Giving you longer PR, longer, we're focusing on one thing at a time, one or two things, highly focused. So this would be our top 20%, right? That we're talking about. The 80% might be unmet, but the 20% is getting hit and is causing the most movement in our life in the area of work. Does that make sense? In our life bucket over here, We have lots of priorities in life. Health, finances, partnerships, kids, pets, friends, all of those things. Maybe your personal growth. Maybe, I don't know, if you're working out, this would be helpful. And the balance, keeping your life counterbalanced is a smaller movement because you couldn't like focus on your kids here and then spend a whole lot of time focusing on your health and leaving your kids on the side. Would you guys agree with that? I mean, you could. <laughs> Probably not gonna feel very good about that. So in your life, your balance, your counterbalance looks like this. And it may be focusing on your family and then your health and then your partner and then your kids and then your health, right? smaller spaces and smaller times between this counterbalance so that you can keep that ball juggling in the air. That's your glass ball, right? You want to keep that one up and not hit the ground and shatter. This one can hit the ground and bounce back up. It's a great thing about work. This one over here is your glass ball. And all of these people and all of these things over here matter greatly. So when you're looking at your counterbalance, you're thinking about two separate buckets in your life. It's not working home together, work and life together. It is work and life separate. And what are you focusing on on the extremes in your work life that allow you to get big results over here? And how are you counterbalancing and balancing all of your life so that all of this gets taken care of simultaneously? It's not one or the other, it's both. How does that feel? You guys are quiet. Are you processing that? It feels hard. Yeah, say what is hard. Yeah, challenging. Challenging. And we all likely have opportunities with this, but we tend to focus here. And you'll lots of books and stories about people who spend their entire lives working really, really, really hard to have really great lives. And then what happens? Something happens. Your kids grow up. And it's are your kids grown up? Yep. Are they all still little? Can you tuck Chris in anymore and read bedtime stories? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Probably doesn't. Probably doesn't. Um, yeah. Yeah. Totally a different relationship now, right? So the things you can do with your adult children are different with your kids. If you're over here and you're working crazy, crazy hours and not focused on life at all. What happens to your relationships with your partner? They fall apart. With your friends? The part of your relationship with yourself, right? And on like those pounds, like totally happen, right? And then you're like fully pulling away all of the stuff. I feel unbalanced because my life isn't getting taken care of. So it's making sure when you're doing your GPSs and your 411s. How many of you have 411s right now? How many have both life and work on? <laughs> she was like, yes, right? How many of you have a GPS right now? How many of you have one for your life? Okay. So what, if, I, <laughs> if I opened your guys' calendars right now, what would be on there? Work. Right? How much of your life do you have on that calendar? Some, right? So, so it works in tandem together. You have to 
counterbalance both simultaneous in ways that allow you to grow both sides. So when you're feeling unbalanced, it's looking at how you can counterbalance the parts of your lives and realizing that there is no balance. Life is not a scale, right? We can't just like drop an extra pebble on the side to balance it out. Sometimes it's like this. Sometimes it's like this. Sometimes it's like this. Because you're like trying to drop things on. Okay? Steady progress for both. Okay, there should be one. No. Okay, well, okay, well, the only thing that has changed, I think, was last Thursday. Why should we say that? Because we were like real. Oh, very good. Okay, sorry about that. We can hear you. We can hear you. Okay, on Thursday last week, Washington State Housing Finance Commission raised the income limits. They were 160. Now you can go up to 180 for a couple or whoever's in the household. For what? For the state bond program, the income limit's just for that one. And then the other thing I was going to talk about, and I think there's going to be a slide later, maybe, maybe not. Um, in talking to some of the instructors that had been teaching the night class and boot camp, it was brought to our attention that there's a lot of lending pieces that go into all of those classes. And most of the agents that are attending them just had no clue what was going on. So I went and spoke to the group of Brian's class um, in August, and we talked about doing a mock home buyer class. So next Monday, I'm going to be teaching it in a small training room, and I've already reached out to those that were in the last Ignite class at boot camp, and I'm going to reach out to everybody else. But this class is going to be the actual home buyer class that I used to teach monthly, but it's going to be geared towards newer agents so that they'll understand the process because they're missing that piece in um, the other classes that are being taught. And they were all for it. They wanted to come to it. So we're going to start that way. Cheryl Dennis is going to teach it with me as an agent. So they'll get a real um, idea of what the lender does, what the agent does, and what the buyers are actually going through. Because a lot of them have never even bought a home yet. So we thought it was important to grab that in. And then um, I'd like to bring it back to the um, office again once a month like we did in the past. We're doing more and more in class um, in person. And Tina Hilden is offered to help teach that class at night. So we'll get a, another variety going. So calendar. Okay, thank you. Yes, she is. So additional events we have business planning clinic for 2023 is scheduled and set and is now open. It's going to take place at farm 12 over in Puyallup um, on the fourth I guess it's in front of me, I could read it there, uh, on the 4th and 5th of October. So if you guys want to go get signed up. What's the cost? $99 for no clock hours, $145 if you want to include the eight clock hours. Is that on the oh, Yes, it is. Thank you. You're welcome. I got you. $145 if you want eight clock hours. Uh, breakfast and lunch are included with that. Breakfast and lunch are included, so you get to be fed. <laughs> Yay, we have real estate role play and script practice every single Wednesday in Federal Way over in the um, lounge area. We will be adding a Kent day over the next couple of weeks, so we'll have one, two mornings a week where you guys can come do script practice um, as a group. Our role play, not conversation. Conversation. We have our Holy Shift class. Let's focus on profit with Terry Guno and A. -ish -a Tree. And that is going to be tomorrow from 1 to 2.30. It was sold out, but we did have a few cancellations this morning. So if it is something you're interested in, yep. if you scan the link, it's probably going to tell you it's sold out. If you email her, she may have a few seats available. Email who? Goldie. Goldie. Okay. Go on like that. And then we have a shift workshop with James Shaw. That's going to take place on the 13th from 10 to 2. So it's a half day on how to shift proof your, your business. Um, and that is 100% virtual. Again, click the little thing if you want to get signed up for that. Is it going to be, are you going to have people in here watching us virtually here, or is it just a bedroom computer? 
That's a really great question that I don't know the answer to, but I will get that answer out today. Okay. Monthly market of the moment with Dennis is going to take place the second Wednesday. So that is, is that tomorrow? Yeah, that's tomorrow. No, no, no. no. Next Wednesday. Be next. Oh, so the third Wednesday of this month. No, no, the second first, Wednesday is the first. Wednesday. First was Thursday. Oh, it's the 14th. Right. I can't yeah, count. It's on the 14th. Next Wednesday. Okay, okay. next Wednesday, the 14th. 15 minutes. We have our CMA workshop um, next month. Yeah, or... my, by the way, my market of the moment may be recorded because I think I'm fishing. Oh. <laughs> market of the moment, maybe a video. <laughs> So CMA workshop is going to be Friday, September the 16th from 10.30 to 1.30. It is going to be 100% virtual, so you can attend. And Anna is teaching that again. I have a class coming up on the 21st, Find Your Real Estate Sweet Spot. Guys, this is where you can use your KPA to discover what type of lead gen you're best for, how to balance your business, what your first hire might be, which is always the same. What you're suited for as an agent, how to build your business based on you versus based on what everybody else says. How's that sound? Super fun. I'm really excited about it. So if you would like to come and having your KPA completed prior to will be extremely helpful. And um, if you've done it before and we have it on file when you sign up, we'll make sure you get that. If you haven't done your KPA, then let me know. Okay, sign up for that. And that's in uh, Mounts to Sound? Yes, yes. that's going to be in Kent. How to will, want to know how to build wealth, but not sure how to start. Dennis has a seven session series. It is sold out. So if you would like to be added to the wait list, please let Goldie know. Full we'll room, Dennis, are you excited? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> go back, go back to that other slide. So excited. Though. So excited. Can you go back one? Go back one. This one, two, three. It's going to be here. What the LLC and the LLC. It's on a bunch it's, of different it's days. Seven, seven, yeah, days. It's seven, yeah. It's seven. The first day, it, yeah, the first day is the 13th. So next Tuesday. I'm pretty sure there's a flyer for it downstairs that you can probably grab. Okay. All right. I'll get it. We have our Rainiers game. Who signed up for that to go? I'm really excited. I'm going to give some details on that. What happens there? It's a baseball game. No, but where Where's are we food? sitting? I have no idea. Yeah. I didn't set it up. Beverages. Food, beverages. First pitch happens at 6.05. I think we have a box for that. We have a, it's the party deck. We have so a party it's deck. it's like out, um, it's in the outfield. There's drinks included, food included. Um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, so show up, even though first pitch is 6.05, party starts at 4 30 and you can all hang out and <laughs> so this is like so early. all right now we have our profit share 2022 profit share virtual summit happening starting thursday october the 6th at 7 a.m to 2 30 so you're going to have a ton of really amazing speakers that are kind of going to talk about building profit share their systems for it and um, what you guys can start doing today to start doing that. So, okay. okay, next week's business meeting, we have a Power Moms or Power Moms panel. Oh, that's hard to say. <laughs> um, and we are also having our end of the summer barbecue. So there will be lots of food here. That'll be super great. So we're going to hear from Jessica Ward, Erica Bartlett, Larissa Butler, and Michelle Wallace on how they counterbalance. Um, their life and their work to uh, do both, right, as a parent. So really excited about that. That's it. Have a great day, guys. So, so we even though I'm the emails to sign up for. Oh yeah.